One month had passed since that traumatic day when Aunt Claire had forcibly shaved Isabella's head and tattooed a dragon design on her scalp. Isabella sat nervously on the porch as her Aunt Claire breezed outside to join her for morning coffee. She knew she had to stand firm today. She was leaving this house before her aunt could enact another deranged and humiliating makeover scheme. Good morning, dear, Aunt Claire sang out cheerfully. Let's have a nice chat, just us girls. Isabella took a deep breath. Aunt Claire, I've already booked my train ticket back to the city for this evening. Her aunt's smile faded. Don't be silly, you're not going anywhere, she scoffed. I am, Isabella said firmly. I appreciate you hosting me this past month, but it's time I got home. Aunt Claire's expression hardened. You ungrateful child, she seethed. After all I've done for you, this is how you repay me? Isabella trembled but held her resolve. What you did was traumatize me. I won't stay here another day and risk enduring more. Ungrateful, her aunt repeated shrilly. I took you in when no one else would. You obey me, not the other way around. Isabella stood up abruptly. I'm leaving. Don't try to stop me. She turned and marched back inside, her aunt yelling after her. Her aunt shouted, jumping up from her chair. She grabbed Isabella's arm in a vice-like grip. Isabella tried to wrench herself free. Let me go. I told you I'm leaving this insane house. Her aunt tightened her hold. You'll leave when I say you can leave. But first, we have an appointment to get to. What appointment? Isabella demanded. I'm not going anywhere with you. Her aunt smiled cruelly. Oh, but you are. We're going to pay a visit to my good friend Frank the Barber. Isabella felt the blood drain from her face. No, I won't let you shave my head again. You don't have a choice, her aunt growled. Now let's go. Isabella struggled with all her might as her aunt dragged her down the driveway. She knew she had to break free before they got to the barber shop or she would be trapped. Her aunt shoved Isabella forcefully into the passenger seat of the car. Don't even think of trying to get out, she threatened. Isabella yanked frantically on the door handle, but it was locked. Please, I'm begging you not to do this, her aunt sneered as she revved the engine. Beg all you want, we're going to the barber and you're getting sheared. The car tore out of the driveway, Isabella bouncing helplessly in her seat. She glanced around for anything to help free herself, but there was nothing. In what seemed like no time, they pulled up to Frank's barber shop. Her aunt grabbed Isabella's arm in a painful grip. No, stop, Isabella cried, trying to pull away. I don't consent to this. Her aunt dug her nails in harder and dragged Isabella into the shop. Isabella saw the gleaming razors and clippers awaiting her fate. Sit, her aunt ordered, shoving her into the barber chair. Isabella thrashed and screamed, but her aunt held her down firmly. Please don't do this, Isabella sobbed as the barber pumped the chair higher. Her pleas went ignored as her weeping echoed around the empty shop. Isabella's sobs intensified as the barber wrapped the cape tightly around her neck. Please, you can't do this. I don't want my hair cut. Keep quiet and sit still, her aunt commanded. Frank is just going to give you a little trim. Isabella shook her head violently. No, I won't let you touch my hair. She tried to stand up, but her aunt pushed her back into the chair forcefully. Hold her head steady, her aunt instructed the barber grimly. He complied grasping Isabella's head in his strong hands. Isabella struggled futilely as the barber picked up a pair of gleaming scissors. No, please, she begged. Don't cut my hair against my will. But her desperate pleas fell on deaf ears. Isabella's aunt laughed derisively. I forgot to tell you, we sheared this mane off a month ago. There's barely anything left to cut. Isabella hung her head in shame, the pixie cut exposing her vulnerability. The barber shrugged and put down the scissors. No need to cut it then, he said casually. Shall I give her a buzz cut instead? Before Isabella could protest, her aunt grinned wickedly. Yes, take it down to the skin this time. The barber nodded and flipped on the clippers, the buzzing shearers filling Isabella with dread. Please, aunt, haven't you humiliated me enough? Isabella pleaded. My hair is already so short, her aunt sneered. It's not short enough. Now hold still like a good girl. Isabella squeezed her eyes shut as the clippers plowed up the nape of her neck, cold metal on skin. Her petite nose and angular cheeks looked harsh and sharp as her hair fell away. In seconds, the clippers left nothing but smooth, exposed scalp in their wake. Isabella ran a hand over her shorn head, feeling utterly violated once again. 
Isabella ran her hand over her freshly shorn scalp, still in shock. She turned to her aunt defiantly. It's your turn now, shave your head. Her aunt chuckled. Oh no, I'll be keeping my lovely locks, thank you. If I have to be bald, so should you, Isabella argued angrily. This experience is for your benefit, not mine, her aunt replied dismissively. But don't worry, I have an even bigger surprise in store. Isabella felt her stomach drop. No more surprises. Haven't you humiliated me enough already? Her aunt smiled wickedly. It's nothing painful or permanent, I promise. Isabella shook her head. I don't care. I don't want any more of your twisted surprises. Ignoring her protests, her aunt grabbed Isabella's arm. Let's go, you're going to absolutely love this. Isabella tried resisting, but her aunt's grip was like steel. She found herself being dragged out of the barber shop and forced into the car. Tell me where we're going right now, Isabella insisted as her aunt drove in silence. Hush, it's meant to be a surprise, her aunt responded with irritating calmness. Isabella crossed her arms. I've had enough of your horrible surprises. Take me home. Her aunt just chuckled softly. You'll see soon enough. After what felt like an eternity, they pulled up to a building with no signage. It was ominously plain and nondescript. Isabella hesitated before being nudged harshly inside by her aunt. The sterile interior revealed nothing. It was a mystery. They were greeted by a tall man in a lab coat who whispered something to her aunt that Isabella couldn't hear. Her sense of dread deepened. What is this place? What are we doing here? Isabella asked shakily. Her aunt's smile was pure ice. Just a little experimental procedure. Don't want you getting too attached to hair ever again. Isabella paled. What? What do you mean? They've developed something to permanently stop hair growth, her aunt revealed chillingly. You'll be bald smooth forever. Isabella turned to run, but her aunt grabbed her forcefully. She was dragged kicking and screaming into the unknown, the hair on her head doomed to be the last she'd ever have. Isabella struggled against her aunt's grip. You can't do this to me. I won't let you take away my hair permanently. Her aunt dragged her down a sterile white hallway. Stop being dramatic. You'll thank me later. They entered a room where a man in a lab coat waited. Isabella shouted, Please help me. Don't let them do this. The man's expression remained impassive as he gestured to a chair. Have a seat and we'll get started. The man gestured to the chair again. Have a seat so we can begin the procedure. Isabella shook her head. I don't consent to any procedure. I want to leave. Her aunt grabbed her arm forcefully. Do as he says and sit down. Isabella stood firm. Absolutely not. I refuse any treatment. The man looked to Isabella's aunt. Without her consent, I cannot administer anything. Her aunt's face reddened with fury. You will do as I hired you for. My apologies, ma'am, but that would be unethical, he replied. The young lady must agree willingly. Isabella took a deep breath. On second thought, I will agree to the procedure. Her aunt smiled smugly. Wise choice, dear. She turned to the man. You heard her. Get on with it. As the man prepped his tools, Isabella said quietly, I'm only doing this because you manipulated me. I do not actually consent. Her aunt scoffed. Consent is irrelevant. You will do as I say. The man looked uneasy, but remained silent as he gestured to the chair again. Feeling defeated, Isabella sat down. Isabella recoiled as the man approached with the syringe. I said no injections. Use the topical solution only. Very well, the man replied, setting down the syringe. He picked up a small jar of cream instead. Isabella looked at her aunt warily. I'm letting him apply this, but no other procedures without my consent. Her aunt glowered but said nothing as the man rubbed the cream gently onto Isabella's shorn scalp. She flinched at his touch. There, all done, the man said when he had finished. The hair regrowth blocking effects will last quite a while. Isabella's aunt smiled coldly. Excellent, now she won't get so shaggy between haircuts. The man glanced at Isabella. Remember, regular reapplication is key if you want the effects to persist. Isabella shook her head. I won't be back. My looks are my choice now. She stood tall and walked out. Isabella stormed out of the building, her aunt chasing after her, yelling, Come back here, we're not done. Whirling around, Isabella said defiantly, Yes, we are done, I'm through being your powerless victim. Her aunt scoffed, You're just an ungrateful brat, I took you in and cared for you. 
cared for me? You abused and controlled me, Isabella shouted. Her aunt sneered. I did what was best for you. You need discipline. Isabella stood tall. The only thing I need is to get away from you, and I will make sure you never hurt others like you did me. Is that a threat? Her aunt snarled. It's a promise, Isabella said firmly. I will expose what you and your crooked contacts did to me. For the first time, Isabella saw a flash of fear in her aunt's eyes. She pressed her advantage. It's over. I have my body and voice back and you no longer control me. Isabella turned and walked away, leaving her spluttering aunt behind. She meant what she said. She would make sure her aunt paid for her cruelty. Isabella embraced her inner warrior. The fight had just begun.